All right, here we go. Overdrive, off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker. And up on TSN 4, Brian Hayes, Jamie Noodles, McLennan, Dave Festchuk of the Toronto Star in here. What's happening, gentlemen? Not much. What a weekend we Woo! just had. What a weekend we here just we go. had. we go... Positive, yeah. Leafs win, yeah. all of that. Leafs we win. Go Shout Nate. out, Noodles. Shout out too for very some clean some game, very, very clean dominant game. game very on good. Saturday yeah, night. Just you know, all business, nothing to see here. Yep. Nashville didn't have much. Just kind of Samsonov efficient in the net. Couple good saves. Matthews, couple goals. Where do we go? <laughs> what happened Friday? Which we didn't have a chance to respond to, right? Because we were off the air at seven o'clock. You're talking about Otani and all that good stuff? Yes. Or are you talking about the Raptors' performance in Charlotte? There's a couple of different It was things. a rough Friday for the Toronto area. Let's yeah. just leave it that. I think that's safe to say. How do we respond to that? Like, where are we at with That's that? a good like, question. I had a, a lot of people this, this weekend pissed. Yes. That's a good question. Like, where are we today yeah. in Toronto? Are we... Are we positive? Are we negative? Are we somewhere in the middle? Are we feeling optimistic, pessimistic? It's a pretty good case study, Dave. You got a pretty good read on this town. I mean, you have an objective view of the way people generally operate. Do you sense negative energy in Toronto? I would say I would lean negative still. I think the Otani stuff well, that's really a, stunk. That's a sky dump. That really stunk. <laughs> wow, the Raptors are they're a mess right now. They're in a bad place. Uh, but, you know, the Leafs are winning games, and I wouldn't say the Leafs are a juggernaut, but they're winning a lot of games. They're yeah. putting up points, and they played well the other night, and they're in New York playing the Islanders tonight. Yeah. So. so there's yeah. a... One you can look at it one both ways. Then. One of three? Yep, both one ways. For three. So 33% were positive, 66%. There's a little bit negative of at this point. Look, Dave, you, where are you at? When you think about the amount of money that the LA Dodgers just spent on this guy, who may never pitch again, mm -hmm. yeah. as Ryan Dempster, our good Canadian ex pitcher yeah. friend, pointed out on the show the other day when I was filling in Hayes, like, you now he probably will pitch again, but he's not pitching this season. No, he's not. But for 700 million US, nearly a billion Canadian dollars, like 1 billion Canadian dollars. They can never, they can never hope to have him live up to that deal. No, you wouldn't imagine so. Um, that said, if the Dodgers win a World Series, they get one, and he has a great fall. They'll probably say it's if you're a fan, it's worth it. Right. Like this is where you separate the team from the fan base, and this is what always amazed me about the reaction to the idea of Otani coming up here or going anywhere. Right. Like, why would you, as a fan, have any negative yeah. approach to this? where I picked up on that over the weekend. I was out a couple of different places um, and speaking with Blue Jay fans, and I've noticed this shift while they dodged a bullet. Yeah, right? that's... Now, now it's like I'm, trying, I'm trying to go positive. Here. And that's what you're saying. And the I'm trying to go positive. The positive is that he comes up here, doesn't pitch to the same level ever again, gets to 35, 36, 37, wheels fall off, team isn't great, ownership says, screw it, we're paying this guy $70 million. Yeah. So no one else is getting paid, and everything goes into the dumpster, and you got the LA Angels 2.0, but they happen to be up here. So can I reason with that in the future? Sure, that might be the case. Yeah. But if you're a sports fan, the idea of watching this guy play yeah. would have been amazing. It would have been great. And it's not your money. and, and that It's was ownership's the, money. Yeah. L.A. must have thought, like, there had to have been some form of, like, analytics, accounting. Marketing, like, dollars, exactly. all that stuff. I'm, we're going to get our 700 back, a pound of flesh out of this guy at some point, like, based on his play, but on his marketing dollars, his face, everything. Japanese tourism coming, right. like, you name it. Like, oh, all yeah. the stuff. Like, that's what would have been factored in here with the Blue Jays. But you're right. I got immediate, like... Dodged a bullet. Yeah, it's all like, good. Like, I'm actually glad he's Greatest not coming. Thing I'm like, ever happened. you were the guy an hour ago that were tw was yeah. tweeting, like, I heard this and I heard that. There was videos being sent to us on, you know, on, was it Thursday or Friday? Fr Friday was yeah. when everything was going down. Videos being sent to us that he was walking off the plane in Toronto. Oh, my God. Like, there were so many trolls on the say. internet. It's a good lesson for everybody to not believe what you read on the internet. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the idea that people are hearing or this is happening or my cousin told me, like, that's <laughs> always been the case. I Long know. before the internet came around, that was happening. It was just happening True. via, you know, broken telephone, basically. But now it is absolutely on overdrive because everything goes viral so quickly and a retweet gets into your algorithm and all of a sudden you're like, oh, check that out. Like, I'll, I'll be that. the first to admit it. 
I, I'm going down the list on Friday. I'm like, that's kind of interesting. This is interesting. Well, I wonder about that. Like, who would not have been intrigued by that? We all were. And why would, if you're a fan, again, why would you not be excited? I think, really, the, the one emotion that resonated for me on Saturday after the news broke that Otani was going to the Dodgers was probably a sense of embarrassment. I think a lot of Blue Jay fans and Toronto sports fans were embarrassed that they allowed themselves to believe. Mm-hmm. That was really the the raw emotion was, uh, of course, he went to the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, it was the Dodgers right. where, like I said on SportsCenter, and I've said countless times leading up to this, two weeks ago, this was far-fetched. Yeah. Like, even the most eternal optimist was like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, two months ago, it was an impossibility. Like, right. if, if two months ago someone came up to you and said, Otani is thinking about the Jays, you'd say, no, he's not. <laughs> and you look back on it now and you wish – Otani just told Shapiro and Atkins from day one, don't waste your time. Yeah. Just, you're out. But obviously he did not do that. I don't doubt. I think we all know that Blue Jays made a pitch. They were in there. Whether they were willing to spend X amount of dollars now is completely irrelevant. And in the end, it's meaningless because they didn't get them. And I think really at the core of every Blue Jay fan is a sense of, embarrassment because because well you allowed yourself to get there you allowed yourself to to believe even again the the most staunch pessimist was like eh, he looked pretty good i could see him hitting yeah that would work and then he goes to the dodgers and you're like of course it had of to be course it went to the yeah. dodgers yeah well your first instinct is usually right you yes know? and we all our first instinct was he's, he's going, going to the dodgers. dodgers right <laughs> yeah and that's and, exactly and, what happened exactly and and but you know what and then the beauty of this one though is you feel embarrassed, Noodles, but at least you can blame the media. Well, right? there there is. Yes, I you mean, can. There, you know, <laughs> yes, and everybody you can. loves blaming the media. That, there's yeah. a guy. There's a guy that probably didn't sleep well Friday night. John Morose. Yes, who yeah. probably had a tough night, tough weekend. You mentioned tough mentions for the rest of time. Dude, John Morosi <laughs> could tweet out "Merry Christmas" and people would say, "Are you sure about that, John? <laughs> Is Santa on a private bird right now, right. John? Like hit, for the rest of time, his mentions will explode from people in Toronto, and that's why I've I've picked up on this sanctimony from some people within our profession that are scolding fans for you know believing that maybe he was on that private bird. John Morosi is on MLB Network. Yes. He is an insider that works for baseball. <laughs> when he tweeted that out, Major League Baseball's account, I believe, retweeted that. Oh, my. And people were, but why would people not be like, oh, that's interesting. John Morosi mm-hmm. said he's on there. Like, you're supposed to have your rate up, our, uh, up at all times. I don't blame fans. I don't blame us. We were on the air live. We're, like, we got the text from Doogie. We're like, wow, that's wild. I, admittedly, I'm sure you could go back and find it. It's podcasted. When we were reading it over the air, I was like, wow, this is. Because we, like- ca- we came on the air Friday. I remember talking. We were all talking about it. We all came on the air. We said, we're going to goof around about this private jet stuff because it's goofy. Yeah. And that was our plan. And we were going to say, oh, I remember with Kawhi. And this is like that chase. And you're going to have the CP24. And our tone changed when the Morosi tweet went out. Because well, then it was like, oh, it's, we're not goofing anymore. This is a guy something there. who has legitimacy, who has tweeted this out. And listen, he got it wrong. No one was hurt in the end. It's <laughs> no. not. He doesn't go to prison Just for this. Everybody's feelings. People make That's mistakes. He <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all good. Although but, when you when you read sort of some of the insider accounts that have come out since, and Verducci's in particular, Verducci, who's one of the more credible baseball writers of Sports Illustrated, has pointed out that that whole sequence of events made the Dodgers awfully nervous, and you wonder how much did it cost the Dodgers right. in putting yeah. more poker chips onto the table for Otani to secure his services. And I'm thinking maybe 100, 100 schmil? Could you imagine that if uh, an anonymous account on, uh, account on Twitter cost the Dodgers like $100 million? Crazy. Because I don't or think it's that tweet by Morosi was like, I mean. man, we got to call that this on guys. Top of, yeah, you know. Although wouldn't you think they'd call him and ask the agent if he's on the plane? And then if the agent goes no, wouldn't you say, oh, okay, then maybe it's not going to cost us $100 million. But maybe he doesn't get back to you quick. I mean, who knows? Who knows? But I'm just saying, if if, Verdu- if a guy of Verducci's credibility is saying it, right. be nervous, I mean, who Well, knows? and Buster they Olney. They, they admitted they were nervous. Yeah. They said we yeah. were nervous, but I, I agree. Like, if you're sitting in a room, you're probably sitting in a war room if you're the Dodgers, and some they're like, it's going crazy in Toronto. They're tracking a flight up there. Right, yeah. And and you're trying. you're probably calling – all of your contacts to go, where is he at? And then if you go back to our show on Friday, you're right at four o'clock. 
We're kind of dancing around. Yeah, here we By go. By 5.30, hey, the, are coming like, off. the Nightingale tweet was kind of like a dagger. Yes. Because we were like, okay. and then It we was were Ralph even, Wiggum. We were all collectively <laughs> Ralph Wiggum. And then even... With Nightingale, you're like, well, he's had a few blank. blank well, that's the false, amazing false, thing. Uh, Again, I, I'm not here to make anything thing. personal against no, anybody. Not but Bob Nightingale wrote a scathing piece <laughs> about the media, you know, keeping themselves accountable. And I'm yeah. like, Bob, come on, man. Yeah. Like, Bob, you've missed. Yeah. Right? John Heyman. Like, the, every, everyone's missed. That's the yeah. nature of it. You, you get things right. You get things wrong. No one's perfect. But using this as an example to admonish all, like collectively, anyone that's ever done anything wrong or got excited about something that turned out to be erroneous, it's sports. Like, yeah. just relax a now little all, bit. Can I we actually, all just relax a little I, bit? I, I, I want to bring this up, though. From, I mean, you've been a you've been a reporter for years. You've had scoops. You've got, you know gotten stuff fed to you. If Morosi was fed this by somebody. Does he make that statement on Twitter yeah. that night? Or does he say, hey, I, I got jammed up? Because I'd be pissed. If somebody yeah. jammed me up, I'm out in them. Or I'm saying, you know what? Like, I don't care. Like, I just look like a jackass in front of everybody. I'm out in you or I'm out in something. Unless the Dodgers gave him a bunch of money or, you know, who else? So Tani's camp, which is not. I, mean, I, I don't think that. Nothing would be. No, I but don't I'm think saying, like, happen, what would but, you do? No, I think, look, I'm, I'm, if, I think the fact that he apologized. Look, and I don't know what he said about the, the process of how he came to that information or how he came to that tweet. My best guess of how he came to that tweet was he got excited about the flight tracker. Yeah. Just like everybody else in the planet got excited about the flight tracker. And he said, oh, it's this airport. He's going to Toronto. Who else could it be on that flight? Right. And I remember saying in the moment to my son, I said, let me see this flight tracker. I'm like, how can you be sure? Like, do you not realize how many rich people live in Toronto, <laughs> live in Toronto or LA that might want to come to Toronto that can get on that flight? Like, you know how many hundred millionaires can get on a private jet these days? Like right. yeah. there's a lot of people that could be on that flight. The idea that it had to be Otani just because it was a private plane going from this airport to <laughs> it Toronto. Is weird. It's yeah. like, it's, it kind of lacks, you, you lack a little bit of awareness of the world. And of course it turned out to be Mr. Dra Mr. Dragon Den's, uh, Dragon's Den himself that right. was on the plane. Yes. And Robert's going to join yeah. us later because there are a lot of people like Robert's under attack as if it's his fault that he booked a why, flight home. Why is it his fault? Everyone's that like, well, he must have known or he should have known. <laughs> I do wonder where the Blue Jays come into play on this, though, because like this was happening within their own market and they would have known whether he was coming up or not. Yeah. Like there's no way Otani was going to surprise them by knocking on the door no. of the Rogers Center or and maybe say, he hey, he's coming to Kikuchi's. Yeah, or party. Kikuchi's uh, big party Ice on Friday party night, whatever was it booked. was. But there was a, a Japanese restaurant that was booked for yes. fifty or whatever. Yeah, Maybe he's flying up I for that. Know. I don't know. In the end, listen, uh, the Dodgers paid to play. They gave this guy seven hundred million dollars. Like it was not some cheap discount for him to stay there. You know, people are reacting, uh, and I understand it. Um, you know about how the response of the American media on this, but the, it's very predictable that the American media is going to take this stance. Because they do look at Toronto differently. Uh, they always have, and they always will. And we're the only Canadian team. And the Dodgers are the Dodgers, too. It's not yeah. like he went to Arizona, right, with all right. due respect. Yeah. He didn't go to a team where you're like, wow, oh, they don't have a rich history. The Dodgers are one of the true great brands in the world. They're yeah. incredibly competitive. He's already been in Southern California. He's going to stay in Southern California. I'm not here to blame the guy. I, no. He got $700 million and now he's playing for the Dodgers. But... You know, the the American media is going to jump on. He picked the right spot. It's better for the game. Toronto's a small market. We all know that that's bogus. But Toronto is a unique market. It's a Canadian market. It's yeah. different. Like, we are. We have to know that. We have to acknowledge that. And I, I'd like to believe that what comes out of this, for the Jays and for the Raptors, because they are unique in this, where the Leafs are different because of the nature of, of the sport, and yeah. there's six other Canadian teams and the history of Canadian hockey, et cetera, is... What the front office, I believe, of the Blue Jays need to understand, front office of the Raptors need to understand, is if you really want to get out in front of all this, you need to draft and develop better than anybody. Because that's something that is completely equal across the board. Right. right? Relying on the big superstar, like LeBron to come up, right. KD to come mm -hmm. up, Otani to come up, it's never happened. I'm not sure it ever will. But right. you can draft and develop your own guys. You can be incredibly shrewd when it comes to trading. And you can live and make a great living 
in that second tier, third tier, the Gosmans, you know, like guys like that, yeah. like, like they have they have signed big guys over the years. Yeah. And when they're in World Series contention, like in the early 90s, then you can get a guy to come up here and be like, I'll sign for a year or two and try to win. Mm-hmm. I'll come up here and try to win. But signing an eight to 10 year deal for the A plus superstars, it has not been a part of our history up here. I can't imagine it's going to be a part of your future. So what do you do? Draft and develop those guys. Yeah. Make them love yeah. it here. Live here and own here because That's that, fair. that like relying on the big monster to come up here, we've done it so many times before. It hasn't gone our way in the past. And again, I just, I don't, and I think we're all guilty of that, myself included. Like I, I was dreaming big when it came to Otani. I'll be the first to admit it. I thought it would have been incredible. It would have been amazing to see a guy come up here, choose Toronto, play as a Blue Jay. It would have been incredibly fun yeah. to talk about him every day, watch him play. Oh, man. But in the end, he went to L.A. Yeah. Like a lot of other guys have in the past. Him. Like Kawhi did. Yeah. But at least, you know, Kawhi was traded up here, like you say. Yeah, I, and I gave him a championship. I think it's a great point, though, because that is the, the level playing field is how you control your draft, how you control the players within your organization that you actually are paying. And... If you make it a destination, if you build a winning program, people want to become a part of that. But you're right. Like the big fish, sometimes this may not be the sexiest stop on the on the circuit. I, I, the weird part is, is all you hear in the NBA, in the NFL, the players that have been here, people love Toronto. Like it's it yeah. is it is a stop, but it seems to be like a great stop on the road. Right. Like hey, you know what? Catch circle that release. weekend, we're going to be in Toronto. You know where. You, you, hopefully it gets to a point where maybe Toronto is the place. It's like, okay, that's a great program. They got a great team. Like you said, you get a great team. You get somebody to put it over the top. That's when the superstar arrived. Exactly. One year, two year. And over. that's what the Raptors did in 19 leading yeah. in there. They had a great team and they were one guy away. He came up, he delivered and then he left. Yeah. And would have been great if Kawhi stuck around. Of course it would have been, yeah, but he course. didn't yet. When he left, he didn't take the championship with him. No. That had already happened. No. And I mean, look, you know, you say Toronto's the only Canadian team. It's certainly that's the case in the NBA. It's the, the case in Major League Baseball. But they're not in a unique situation. Like, it's the majority of the markets right. are in the same boat. You don't have, you know, if you're anywhere north of, you know, Georgia, you don't have great weather. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, if, you, if you're, Chicago's got terrible weather, what, what free agents are they getting? Right. You know, like, guess what? New York is New York and Yotani wanted nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like and there's yeah. and there's reasons for that. Um, you know, it's you would say, yeah, draft and develops one thing. I think Masai Ujiri, if he was sitting at this table, might say also trade. Like that's the as he said, you know, a couple of times, Masai said, the new free agency in the NBA is players moving teams. Mm-hmm. I.e., you gotta catch somebody that wants out, put together the right deal, and hope for the best. Right. And they tried with Dame and, and I'm sure they'll try with the next guy that they want to want to get who wants out. Maybe it'll be Giannis. We've seen Giannis having some friction okay. down in Milwaukee with his Maybe it'll his be the, the Northern Star winner today. Sure. Shea Gildas wow. Alexander. Yeah. Like that that's sense. coming, man. It's whenever like Shea's good. years away from yeah. being a free agent and he owns Oklahoma City right now, but he won the Canadian Athlete of the Year today. You were involved in that. Mm-hmm. Um I think he had an incredibly strong case. First team all NBA, what he did at the World Cup them punching their ticket to the Olympic Games for the first time in a long time, in large part because of him. He put that team on his shoulders. Um, but he's the guy. Like, he's the guy you circle because he's from, he's here. from here. Exactly. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, and, again, I don't want to do that two days removed from the Otani stuff, but it just you immediately get dragged back in. You're like, all right, who are we? Who are they going to pursue yeah, who's next? Who's the next guy? Who's well, the next guy that or... everyone's going to collectively chase? Right. But that's a different storyline, right? Because that's coming home. Like that's right. that's not coming to a different place. That's that's just coming to the GTA, and he's a yeah. good Hamilton guy, well, which we've they, never really seen at the NBA level because we haven't had like Steve Nash. But Nash, unless he was going to the Grizzlies or whatever, wasn't coming up here, mm-hmm. a, and especially later in his career when he really peaked, it was established. Well, Angelo tried was, to get him, right? Tried to. Went after him. The yeah. next guy was you saw the tweet from the guy with with the hairpiece in Edmonton. Took, taking a shot. Did you see Struddy's tweet on oh. Friday? Yeah, uh, I don't know if I saw Struddy <laughs> tweeting. We should put it up. But then okay. people, if you watch the mentions on it, it's McDavid coming. Right. That's where people are like, "Oh wait, Dumb McDavid's coming back yeah. home." And because Struddy took a shot at, I can't remember how we. I'm going to paraphrase something. It. I, I something think I remember like, yeah, something yeah, about Otani not coming here or whatever. Yeah. And and you know he's tongue in cheek, but it's that's the 
where people start going, okay, you know, he's got unfinished, unfinished business in Edmonton, but he is a GTA guy. He's mm-hmm. from here. So, you know, maybe that's in the cards somewhere well, down the down the road. It, 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 possibly, but I, I think, again, my, the lesson I'm going to take, I'm not here to preach what other fans are going to do, but what I'm going to take out of this is, okay, what is already here? Right. And how do you augment this? And how do you get better? Right? Like, if you look at the Blue Jays, they still had 89 wins without Otani, better than right. the Angels. They still have Bo. They still have Vladdy for a couple of years under control. They still have an elite starting rotation. Yeah. Hey, get to work. Yeah. Right? Get to work. Start picking away at this. Add a player to in free agency. Maybe make a splash via trade. Don't panic. Don't do anything you feel you have to just to win PR. It's December. You're not playing any games anytime soon. But, okay, you got those guys here with the Leafs. You got guys here. Yeah. Like you got guys here. You got a good team, good players. They go to well, the playoffs every year. And speaking of, it's all drafted and developed, right? Right. I mean, exactly. Outside of, outside of Tavares, who came home. Yep. Yeah. You know, a la, you know, the, in the way that the Raptors one day hope, you know, Shea might come home. Right. Uh, you know, hasn't worked out maybe as well as you'd hope, but there's still time. Yeah, but that's it, right? Like Bo and Vladdy. Vladdy was signed. Bo was drafted, but developed here. Scotty Barnes drafted, developed. That's the guy who's going to likely drag the Raptors out of whatever they're dealing with right now. It's they, not going to happen this year. What, what the hell are they're they? They're not doing? a good team, is what they oh, are. It's yeah, they it's lack good, depth yeah. and talent and shooting. Can't shoot. Well, they yeah, they haven't been able to shoot in years. Like Last their half court offense is horrendous. Thirtieth of thirty teams in three point shooting. Guys. Yeah, I yeah. got news for you. That's not good. Six for thirty-two against Charlotte. Right. Six for thirty-two. You can't win in the in the like, modern NBA. No, Grady Dick's like supposed to be a three-point. But he ain't, or, he's nowhere close I to know, being an NBA. But player. maybe a couple yes. years from now, he looks like it. Yeah, you know, like that's yep. a thing. He's, but he's you know he's, he's a kid, barely a teen, in barely out of teenagehood, and he looks like it body wise. Yeah. He's got a long way to go to develop physically. So right. To get out on the floor and stay out on the floor, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And then there's yeah. the whole confidence thing, which is hard to build until you've actually done something. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, I mean, he's already playing for the 905, and I think that's going to happen a lot over the course of the year. I wouldn't be shocked if he played games there next year. He needs like, He's probably years he needs away. Be, like, but there's a, a draft and there's a develop. And maybe yeah, no, the guy exactly. Ends up being a, that's what you got to hope. They got to hope, right? man. Yeah. got to hope. They for need sure. shooters. They need shooters. They badly. need shooters. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I mean, they're not currently on the team. So, yeah. I don't know how Messiah and Bobby are going to go about finding them. It's an interesting <laughs> philosophy, though, like the whole analytics debate about, you know, pulling pulling Barrios when they pulled Barrios yeah. and did did analytics kind of overtake common sense in baseball? Um, do analytics sometimes overtake common sense in basketball where there's this idea that if you don't shoot threes, then you're just committing a sin. Mm-hmm. But the flip side to that is if you can't make threes, why do you keep shooting threes? Right. You know? Find a different way. <laughs> right. You know, and they, they really are proving they cannot make threes. <laughs> yeah. And yet Darko is out there. Coach Darko is out there saying, oh, we got to keep taking them, guys, and yeah. putting a smile on his face and saying, hey, believe you can make them. But nobody seems to believe they can make them because there's a good amount of data that says they don't make them. Yeah. yeah. And so you might want to change tack until you get somebody in the building that can actually make them. I don't know. It's 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 an interesting debate about why you just keep doing something you can't do because the numbers say you should do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the whole game has changed in the last decade, really. Like basically the the math behind Golden State and what they represented. They keep hitting threes. You keep hitting twos. You're not going to win. Yeah. Well, yeah. three is worth more than two. <laughs> my my, my is math is good enough two. to know. Fair that. Enough. Yes. yes. But to your point, zero. Is zero less is than zero. is less than two. <laughs> yes. Zero is yes. also less than two points. Uh, so there there probably is some sort of you know middle ground on that. I'm with you. But Raptors are in uh, New York tonight. The Leafs are in New York tonight too. Yeah. Kind of an interesting uh, crossing over, I guess. Where MLSC, I would assume everyone's down there. They're at the Garden. The uh, the Knicks uh, Raptors tonight at the Garden, and the Leafs are. In Long Island, where John Tavares is two points away from a thousand, yeah, two from a thousand, it could happen tonight if he were to get two points. Yeah, do you think they would acknowledge that th- in that building? They should. Like, if he hit one thousand points, do you think they John should. Tavares? They, I, I think, you know, he's moved on. Everyone, there'll still be a little booing here and there, but I think at the end of the day, here's a guy they drafted, took a lot of pride in it. Like he was there a long time. It's a new arena as well in Belmont. I was there not that long ago. It's a really nice arena. <clears throat> and the Islanders are playing good hockey. They're yeah, seven, they are. Two and, I think they're tied the same record as the Leafs in the last 10 games. Yep. So they've won a couple in a row. Like, it should be a good game. I think they should ignore If he gets two points tonight, now again, 
if it's an OT winner or an assist on the, they're yeah. probably not going to, hey, hey, you know, give him his flowers. But if it's in the second period and it's acknowledged. I just wonder if they would up. avoid it because they'd be like, if we do, they're going to boo so loud. Because they, like, that first yeah. return was really ugly, and the yeah. Leafs were horrible. They embarrassed themselves last night, that night. Remember the Islanders beat them, like, 6-0. 6-1. 6-1. It was, six yeah, one. It was, six one. It was awful. And they were all over Tavares, and they were tailgating. It was wild. And it was really, really, really ugly. And since like, then, it has not been nearly as, like, vitriolic. Yeah. But the, Five years ago. But four years still, ago. Yeah, it was four years they ago. They still yeah, boo I mean, yeah. listen, when T-Mac was coming back 10 years after, he was getting booed. When Vince was coming up, he was still yeah. getting booed by some people. Eventually, okay, but, that turned. But that's what I'm saying. I, I wonder when that turn is when because turn? Yeah. Vince came up. By the end of it, he was getting applause. And, and people yes. like him. And, you know, we've had arguments on the show. Is he yep. in the ring of honor? Or is he whatever it's called? Or is he going to get his jersey retired? All of that. Like, at some point, I think the Islanders fans is like, okay, he's moved on. And I personally would give him. You know, a little love. You but would I, think so. Six years later, I don't know. Though. I don't know. But I, I don't like, know either. It's New like York I've, fans. I've, like I've been in Toronto when they booed Vince. I've been I've been in Cleveland when LeBron came back from taking his talents to South Beach. Yeah, and it was ugly. But I've never seen anything as ugly as the ritual burning of John Tavares' <laughs> sweater really? in the parking lot. They were burning them like they had hundreds of them. Yeah. <laughs> they were just burning them all. And you could smell like the smell of burning polyester like, was wow. heavy in the air. It was and they bad. were killing him. And and Lou would come Lou would come out the day before, Lou Lamarillo, of course. Lou's rules were let's be classy fan base. They didn't listen to a word Lou said. Right. They did not follow Lou's rules. Cause they just killed him. They were chanting, We don't need you. Yeah. Barzell's better. Thanks for leaving. Oh, they were it all was, over them. And the Islanders suspicious. were a good team, too. Like, the Islanders made the playoffs. Yeah. I think they won around. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if they're I, – I I'm with you. There, there will be a day when they come around. I'm just, not sure it's going to be today. That's what I'm thinking. At some point, but I just thought, okay, you're five years in or six yeah. years in. Like, and 1,000 right, so points. Now. I mean, you would think that should accomplish. be universal across the league. Anyone hits a milestone like that in your rink, you salute that player. You should. Like any team should be like, hey, we just want to acknowledge 1,000 points. Congratulations on behalf yeah. of hey. Boo. <laughs> like people just, I think that's the way it's going. It is, I, I mean, yeah. they did the, they did the tribute video the night he came back, and it was and they tried the, they tried the trick of let's do all his hospital visits so yeah. people won't boo. Right, he's like, a good just, Samaritan. But they still booed the hospital visits. Yeah. Right, yeah. because Which is crazy. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. They don't like him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I hope he gets it tonight. I think it would be incredible to see. Leafs Islanders tonight, Raptors at the Garden playing the Knicks. We'll tee that up. And we've got a two-pack of Monday night football games, too. Nice. Wild scene in the in the NFL yesterday, man. That Kansas City finish. Oh, is Mahomes, what, like, I don't we'll know. We'll get into it. Yeah, we've we got Luke go. Wilson coming up at 5. We've got Al's brother who will join us today. We've got picks tonight. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Dan tweeting in with a good point. I hope this is happening, saying he just heard that uh, – Greg Popovich is on his way to Long Island to ask the fans not to boo John Tavares tonight. Love it. Yeah, Pop wants to let everyone know in Long Island that, uh, you know, they're classier than Classy, that. That's not who they are. That, yeah. yeah. So That's there you go. Point. Hopefully Pop is there to make sure that he scolds everybody. Lou tried it. Lou's already tried that trick. Yeah, Lou's tried scolding people. There's a lot of people being scolded these days. That trick, though, that really pissed him off. Like that one was the pop thing. Yeah, I thought that was, was the so most heroic. ridiculous thing I've maybe ever seen. And then he doubled down on it. Like, uh, oh well, yeah. You know, it's- oh no, it was uh, it was uh, competitive stuff. That's why because uh, you know don't poke the bear, pop. You Try winning a game. A game. Try winning a game. They haven't won a game in like se- they're like zero for seventeen That's or something yeah, last like ridiculous. month and a half. They're brutal. I mean, who would have thought that you know the grand old man of basketball would mm-hmm. ruin the career of Victor Wembanyama. Well, it, it's it's kind of crushed the buzz. Like, no one's I mean. talking about Wemby because they can't win anything. Yeah. Um, all right, so the Jays have turned the page, right? The Jays have turned the page. Where do they go from here without Shohei Otani, without Juan Soto? To chat about it, here's our good buddy Keegan Matheson of MLB.com. Do you have that answer for us, Keegan? What would you anticipate the Jays have been doing the last 48 hours? Well, a lot of uh, staring blankly into the distance, I'd imagine, after how this went. This has been an ugly few days for the Blue Jays. This is not where they want to be. This is not where they plan to be. Uh, You have to pivot very quickly. But the the heartbreak that fans are feeling, there's a lot of people in that organization who understandably allow your hopes to get up and 
your dreams to uh, to follow what Shohei Otani could have been in Toronto, and now that's uh, just a memory, which is a uh, a very hard and strange place to be. Keegan, is it damage control? Would you look at it that way? I don't know if it needs to get to that type of wording, but there was a lot of people up up here excited. Obviously, they're in on him, so now the next, I guess the thought process is they were willing to buck up for Shohei. Now are they going to spend some money on on some potential other players to beef up this team. Yeah, you, you guys, you need to reinstate some level of hope in this team because as much as we talk about individual player names and runs the team goes on, it's hope that sells tickets. It is hope that excites people. And Shohei Otani represented that more than any baseball player has in this city potentially. And that's gone now. So this is the harsh reality, I think, now of – sitting at the adults' table in Major League Baseball. When you're at the kids' table eight, ten years ago, sure, if you finish second, you finish third in the pursuit of a big free agent, you take that silver or bronze medal and you hang that in the wall. That's a good thing. It shows you are getting serious. When you're at the adults' table with the Mets and the Yankees and the Dodgers and all of these big wallets, you either sign the guy or you don't. There's just two groups, and... I know a lot will be talked about the Blue Jays being close, the Blue Jays making a run, and that is a good thing, but you either sign the guy or you don't. And the Blue Jays find themselves in that camp right now and needing to pivot quickly to reinstill some of that hope, guys, because they've asked a lot of this fan base the last few years when they have done nothing in the postseason despite a lot of hype. Eventually, that's got to be backed up. And if it's not going to be Otani, it's got to be somebody. But that's a a tough sell job right now. So, Keegan, I mean, I guess the problem is you you talk about plan B. I mean, before free agency began, you thought plan B, if you don't get Otani, is Soto. But Soto's off the table because Brian Cashman and the Yankees were smart enough to get him early so that there wasn't a feeding frenzy for those who didn't get Otani. And plan C, whatever this is going to be, if I'm looking at the free agent list, it doesn't really excite me. Is there anything on there that excites you and may excite the Blue Jays? Yeah, guys, if you look at the offseason now, without Otani, without Soto, if you pretend they never existed on this market, it's just kind of a regular underwhelming class in terms of this offseason free agency. You can do a Cody Bellinger where there's a lot of upside and, oh, a lot of risk and a lot of money. You can go down that extra level to where there are the Matt Chapman types, piece it together with a J.D. Martinez, a Reese Hoskins. None of those names are exciting a fan base and selling tickets like those big names would have, but you have to piece this together somehow. You need to get to the playoffs and make some noise somehow. Where I think makes more sense, guys, for the Blue Jays right now is the trade market. Go out there and grab a name that would surprise some people. Go out there and Use your financial muscle on the trade market. This front office does a good job of that. Where can you find that next version of a Matt Chapman? Kind of like they did a couple of years ago on a team that might not want to be paying a star player. There are some teams that are going to be looking to shake off some salary. You need to find some star power, something to excite this fan base again, because this fan base has been very passionate and very patient (laughs) the last few years. And, they uh, they want and I believe deserve that that kick of enthusiasm again, and it's not exactly knocking on Toronto's door uh, in this market that's left. With Keegan Matheson, MLB.com, I, I think this is actually a perfect opportunity for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. to recapture this market and to own it again because last year he had a down year. The last couple of years he's had a down year, but it was not that long ago this guy was neck and neck with Otani for MVP status in terms of setting, you know, not records necessarily because Bautista had already established, but hitting high 40s home runs, an OPS up around 1,000, being a beast and being a juggernaut and a guy that we always believed would be the cornerstone to the point where Otani, sure, it would be a bonus, but he didn't have to be the man. Like with the Dodgers, the amazing thing about them is it's going to go, like the, the talent they have there is outrageous. Like, yeah. Just outrageous, and Otani is going to be added to that group. But up here, for me, Keegan, if I'm if I'm Ross Atkins, if I'm Mark Shapiro, if I'm Vladdy's representative, I'm getting him on the phone saying, "Big boy, it's your time. Like this market, we're looking for somebody. We need a superstar. We need a rock star. If you return to form like you had a couple of years ago, 
people are going to forget about Otani real quick. And this can be Vladdy Guerrero's team again. It's just whether or not he can recapture that and he's willing to put in the work to get it. Yeah, this market is dying for Vladdy to be that guy. This is the homegrown star. This is the recognizable name that came up as a prospect. It's a dream story if it can work. But who is Vladdy? Is he that 2021 version? Well, Vladdy and you know, his agent in negotiations, I'm sure, would believe that. Or is he a guy that's a low 800s OPS, maybe 30 home runs a year, that will have some peak years throughout that? Now is the time, guys. If yeah. not now, then when? Because Vladdy, just like Bo, has two years left of team control. Now, the closer you get to free agency, I think the less likely it is that an extension is signed ahead of time. But what is a better motivator than that free agent contract? And a year from now, we're going to see what Juan Soto gets on the open market, which is going to be ridiculous. Again, Vladdy can be one of those guys, but he needs to turn it around. He has created some doubt around that. Is is he just a very good hitter? And that's fine, but we were talking about a generational guy a couple of years ago. The door is wide open for him. Uh, I think Bo Bichette is a guy that you can project with more confidence. Vladdy still trying to figure out who he is long term. But my God, is this market ever starved for him to step into that and be that guy? You, you guys can remember those images of him pointing at the field saying, this is my house. This is my house after walk-off wins. It hasn't been in a while, but man, if he could make that happen again, that's a big part of the solution. Does it also maybe potentially affect contract negotiations where if you're sitting there looking at the Jays and they're saying, well, you were willing to spend X amount of dollars on Otani. Now I'm not Otani, but I'm a step below or I'm in this, like, I want, I would like a little extra cash here. Do you think they've kind of like hamstrung themselves that way where you know, they've been op- willing to open the purse strings. Now they might, players might try and take advantage of that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The Blue Jays have been known as a team that has money now. This is not a, a secret to agents. But looking at Otani as it is, uh, imagine we are out shopping for a car and we're looking at the Ferraris, we're looking at the Lamborghinis, and then we say, you know what? Take me over to this lot and show me the sensible sedans. That salesman is going to try to bump you up a little bit. You've tipped your hand. They know how much money you have. It's going to work like that. When you get down to that range where a Matt Chapman type of player is, when the agents are looking to squeeze more out of that, especially with a Bellinger or a Yamamoto type who are going to cost a lot no matter what, the Blue Jays are a team that if I'm an agent and I'm trying to land a big contract, I want the Blue Jays in on it. I know that the Blue Jays, number one, have money, But B, they've got to be motivated right now. They have to be motivated to bounce back and give this market a name they've heard of, a player they have heard of at this point, coming off the disappointment of Otani. Keegan, it's been a fun ride, buddy, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of activity in the future, and when that happens, we'll be reaching out, as always. We appreciate you doing this. You got it, fellas. I'm going back to the plane tracker here. Take Atta care. boy. <laughs> Stay on top of those things. Keegan Matheson of uh, MLB.com. Something to chew on brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar from touchdowns to tie bites and puck drops to pizza. BP's elite lineup of apps, wings, and ice cold beers always dialed in for game time. Hustle into your local BP tonight. We're asking people, can the Jays still have a successful offseason despite missing out on Otani and Soto? 51% of the votes, yes. 49, no. Ooh. It's tight, man. Ooh, okay. <laughs> like people, I, I think I, I would answer no in terms of the PR. The public relations, it's over. The PR's gone. It was Otani. You put all your eggs into the basket of Otani. Soto's in New York. Yeah. You're, not, you, you, you're not going to acquire anyone that's going to get anywhere close to those two. But I would answer yes in terms of putting a club together and trying to turn things around to actually win ball games in the future. And I think a lot of it can be internal, like I said about Vladdy. Like if I'm Vladdy Guerrero Jr., I am licking my chops in. I'm going to show up in shape, and I'm going to crush, and everyone here that's wounded from Otani is going to jump right back on my bandwagon. I can be the king of this county, and I intend and on doing it. And then I'm going to make a lot of money, and guess what? The Jays are going to say, here you go, we'll pay it. Yeah. We will pay it. Like If you prove that you're the man again, this team will pay you, and I, they should. I'd love to believe it. Oh, I'm not saying I'd love to believe it, but what's been going on the past two years where he hasn't been that guy after he was that guy, as you point out, neck and neck with Otani 
for MVP, but was that ballpark effects of playing in Dunedin and then in Buffalo and smaller ballparks, 48 home runs. Two years since Hayes, I just don't know if he's that guy. No. That's the question is, what is he? Like that, if you ask every baseball you know expert, what is Vladdy? Like, it, like, what is his, not his top, his projection, but, like, what is he as a player? Is he a star? Is he a superstar? Is he just a really good player, a power hitter? Is, mm-hmm. You know, he the last two years haven't gone the way we've all expected, but he set the bar so high. That That's it. He That's did it, it once. We've seen it, and the, proje- the talent's still there, and the exit velocity and all that, but he's somewhere between good and very good right now. Right. That's what he is. Okay. But they need a superstar. And if he returns, people will go nuts. And it will go a long way in this team winning ball games. And if they oh, yeah. win and they're entertaining and they hit better than they did last year and right. better with in terms of runners and scoring position and they make the playoffs, then you move on. Right. But if yeah. they go south and they win 78 games next year, it, I got, it'll be tough to recover. Well, I got news for you. With what they're asking their fans, which is a big bump, in prices. Right. Like after they've renovated this thing for three hundred million bucks, they want the money back. And I, that's understandable. Mm-hmm. It's a but business. They, they've got to make a splash. Like I'm with I'm with Keegan. Maybe don't overpay Bellinger or Matt Chapman in free agency, but you better get to work on some trades here, Mr. Mm-hmm. Atkins. Right. Because you can't just go into the spring training next year like everything's fine. If you don't make a splash. That's gonna be one hell of a presser in Dunedin. If they just kind of plug some holes, a couple of discount, you know, one year <laughs> deals. Good analytics uh, guy. Yeah, quality you know. analytics guy here or there. Yeah, that's that's probably not gonna sell. I don't think so. I'm not sure that they're gonna go down that road. We'll see. It's still a long off season. There's still a lot of guys available. A lot of trades are likely still gonna happen. Um, Luke Wilson in studio in about fifteen minutes. The Leafs and Raptors both in action tonight. Overdrive continues. TSN ten fifty and on the TSN app. All right, Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. I believe on FanDuel, the Leafs are favored tonight. Now, I talked about this last week, that, you know, we watch them so closely. You break down everything about this team. You got Joseph Wall's injury. You've got injuries on defense, inconsistencies at times, even the coach speaking about it, the GM speaking about it. Yet they're 7-1-2 in the last 10. Like, all they're doing is racking up points. And I thought they played a great game on Saturday night. Like, to the yeah. point where Samsonov had a shutout and he wasn't the first star and no one expected he would be. No. Because he was barely challenged. They just completely pushed Nashville out of the building. And that's an impressive win. And it's probably, a, it has to be a blueprint. Like, if you're going to have issues on the back end, if you're going to have goaltending where there's going to be some inconsistencies, when in doubt, put a system in play. Make it work. Well, you can beat teams, especially inferior teams, which is what Nashville is. And I think that's why those of us who watch this team closely have sort of been quibbling with them this year, because that was the first time in nine games they'd been involved in anything but a one goal game. Right. Hayes, like, right. They haven't been dominating games in that fashion. And last year they did it right. They were a much better defensive team last year. And even that stretch, they lost Morgan Riley. Uh, Brody was down for about half of that 15 game stretch around this time of year. Mm. They became the best defensive team in the league for like right. a 15 game stretch where they were allowing a little more than two goals a game. And we kind of came to expect that a Sheldon coach, a Keith coach team that played with that structure could do it, but they haven't done it outside of last uh, outside of Saturday night. They haven't right. done it very often this year. They've been playing this catch up comeback team kind of loosey goosey style. And I don't think anybody's convinced that that can actually do anything for them in the playoffs. Yeah. For me, it was just a complete game. And I don't know if I, we've seen complete games through this stretch where you're right. Like they win, they've been down to, they've been up to it kind of, you, you mentioned the one goal game. That was a 60 minute effort. That was just buttoned up. Yeah. We talk about it always, you know, teams being buttoned up. They were buttoned up on Saturday. Well, and it they was an good. inferior opponent again, which is an issue that this team's had in the past where they've looked at a Nashville and they're like, man, we could put five or six on the board tonight. Like we can, we can cheat a little bit. We can jump the zone. We can try to chase odd man rushes. And as a result, you end up giving up a lot. And that wasn't the case. And, and again, that needs to be expressed, I think, again tonight. The Islanders are playing really well. But they're an inferior team in terms of talent, yeah. like overall talent. But they will play a system that will make you earn it. And if the Leafs replicate what they did on Saturday, and it's not always going to happen. But if you can play like that with a system in place where you button things down seven out of ten times, eight out of ten times, you're going to cruise to the playoffs. 
Like you're just going to cruise there because you have the talent to overcome whenever you do need to get in a shootout, which will happen, or when you don't have your legs or you run into penalty troubles or whatever. And it just, it was necessary. Like it was needed. And again, I think it amplifies the fact that even with that being the case, they're 14, six and four. Yeah. Like they're, uh, if you hadn't watched a game and I told you before the season they'd start 14, six and four, you'd probably be like, yeah, that sounds well, like what I expected the Leafs to do. Just a really good team, really comfortable in the regular season, and they just keep chugging. Well, that's the weird thing, Hayes. Like they're on pace for 111 points. Yeah. Like they were, they were at 115 last year. Like, and yet it just hasn't looked as good as it did last year, right? It just hasn't been. They haven't had a lot of those button, inconsistent. buttoned up games. That's and really what it is. It's but they were pretty awful at the start of last season. Like, awful. Right, but times. then they kicked it into gear. They did, but it was about 20 games into the season. Yeah. I mean, we're in December here. Yeah, You're right. Right? Like, I expect they're going to get better as the season goes on. Well, they're starting to get better. Yeah. And yeah. that's ultimately all that matters, you know, is just punch your ticket and fight for home ice because it's going to be a battle. Well, and, and that's the one thing. It is going to be a battle all year. Yep. They've got to win because, you know, the Islanders are one point behind them in the standings. Not that you care about it. You're 20-some games in. Right. But everybody's it's chasing close. the standings. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. That said, historically, you get to 100 points, you're probably in. Probably. Right? Like, that's generally yes, yes, the math. Yes. You're, you're going to get in. So you can do the math to that extent. Hour two coming up. Luke Wilson in studio. More on the Leafs tonight. Raptors in action. Two Monday nighters as well in the NFL. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4.